This video looks at bird diagrams and how they are affected when you multiply with a lead compensator. So you'll remember in terms of the overview, we were looking at frequency response and sketching of frequency response curves or bow diagrams. And now we've moved on to issues linked to feedback loop analysis and design. And in particular, the question we're asking is how are bow diagrams affected if you multiply by a lead compensator? So a quick reminder of what we did. In the previous video, we've defined our lead compensator has this sort of formula, k s plus a of s plus beta a, with beta positive and between 1 and 10. And what we showed was a typical lead compensator had low gain at low frequency and high gain at high frequency. And it also had positive phase. And if we mark the corner frequencies, they would typically be somewhere around here. So all the key action happens between the corner frequencies. So you get maximum slope, you're moving from low to high gain, and you get maximum phase. Now some background on boat diagrams in general. You remember far earlier on, we talked about additive properties of boat diagrams. So the key thing is if you multiply two transfer functions together, so write g equals g1 times g2, then the phase of g is the phase of g1 plus the phase of g2. And the gain of g, so there's the gain 20 log to the base 10 of modulus of g, is the gain of g1 plus the gain of g2. So what does that tell us? If you multiply two things together and then look at the impact on the Bode diagrams, then it's addition in both Bode plots. So if you have the original Bode diagrams, you can simply add them together to get the Bode diagram of the product. And a final reminder, in the long term, we're going to be moving towards the analysis of feedback loops. So here's a simple feedback loop with a compensator M and a process G. And the question we're asking ourselves is, if we had the Bode diagram for G, so that's without compensation, how would that be modified when the compensator was a lead? So in other words, given G and given a lead, what would the Bode diagram for G M become? So let's remind ourselves of some of the key characteristics of a lead compensator. So we know that it moves the low frequencies by k over beta and the high frequencies by k. In terms of the phase, we know at the geometric mean of the corner frequencies, then the phase, I shouldn't say down, that should say up, the phase moves up, and here's the formula, 10 to the minus 1 of root beta minus 1 over root beta all over 2. And we also know that at the corner frequencies, the phase moves up by 45 minus 10 to the minus 1 of 1 over beta. So consider a system and a lead compensator. So we're giving you a system here, G, 3 over S plus 1, S plus 4, and a lead compensator, M equals 4 times S plus 1 over S plus 3. And let's look at what we can do. Now rem remember, the assumption will be that you're given the Bode diagram of G to start with, and we want to see the impact of adding the lead. So the focus here is on what the lead will do. So the lead at low frequencies, the gain is 4 over 3, or 2.5 decibels. At high frequencies, the gain is 4, or 12 decibels. So you're going to get an increase in gain from 2.5 decibels to 12 decibels. Now the geometric mean of these corner frequencies, so you've got a corner frequency at 1 and a corner frequency of 3, so the geometric mean is about 1.7. And if you use the formula from the previous page, what you'll see is that the phase peak will be 30 degrees. At the corner frequencies themselves, the phase will move up by about 25 degrees. So these are the key values we're going to use for sketching. And you'll see on the next page how we use these. So first then, the green plot here is the lead. And I'm going to change it to black. So what we said was that at low frequencies, what did we have as the gain? We'll just go back and check. You'll see there it was, 2.5 decibels. So there we had 2.5 decibels. And at high frequencies, we had about 12 decibels. Now the corner frequencies in this particular case were 1 and 4. 
So there's a frequency of 1. There's a frequency of 4, if I mark that up here as well, 1 and 4. So you'll see the key action in terms of the game plot occurs in this region here, between 1 and 4. So that black plot shows you what's happening to the gain of the compensator. Now the original system had a bow diagram given by this blue plot here. And the question we're asking is where's the compensated gain plot? So what we've got to do is at this end we've got to move up by 2.5 decibels and at this end we've got to move up by 12 decibels with the key transition being between 1 and 4. So if you look at the gap in here between the red and the blue you'll see that's about 2.5 and if you look at this gap here you'll see the gap is 12. So we have a gap of 12 at low frequency, a gap of sorry at high frequency, a gap of 2.5 at low frequency and then a transition between the two. So just by adding the black to the blue you get red. So what we're doing is we're adding black to blue. So there's the gain plot. Now what about the phase? For the lead compensator you'll notice we had roughly zero at low frequencies and then where was the phase peak? The phase peak was at about 1.7. So I'll mark that there. About Sorry the corner frequency wasn't 4 was it? It was 3. I do apologise. That was a silly mistake to make. There was the other corner frequency. It was 3, not 4. So the phase peak was at about 1.7. You can see it marked there. And we said the phase peak was at about 30 degrees. We said at the corner frequencies, which were there and there, we had 25 degrees. So given that information, we get our nice phase diagram from this lead. Now, what we've been asked to do is to say, how do I get the compensated bowed phase plot? So the blue again we've been given, the blue is the original. And all we've got to do is, our circle here is add black to blue in order to get the compensated system. So at this point here, the 1.7, the up shift has got to be 30. At the corner frequencies, the up shift has got to be 25. So just using a ruler or otherwise, I can mark three crosses with the correct upshift. So move the blue plot up by 30 at 1.7, up by 25 at 1 and 7. That gives me the three crosses. And then I can just do a smooth curve going through those crosses and going back to the blue asymptotically. And therefore I have the compensated diagram. So here's a second example. Sketch the Bode diagram for GM given the Bode diagram for G. So we're going to give you G, the Bode diagram for G, and there's the uh, transfer function, 0.2 over S plus 0.1, S plus 0.2, S plus 0.6, and here is the lead. 2 times S plus 0.4 over S plus 3. So first let's look at the key characteristics of, we should emphasize, the lead. So at low frequencies, the gain is 0.8 over 3, which is minus 11 decibels. At high frequencies, the gain is 2, which is plus 6 decibels. The geometric mean of the corner frequencies, which is going to be given by the square root of 0.4 times 3, in case you were wondering uh, what it should be, and we've got that the geometric mean of the corner frequencies is about 1.1. And at this point, the phase is going to move up by 50 degrees, because what you'll notice in this case, beta is 7.5. At the corner frequencies, the phase is going to move up by about 37 degrees. So let's take this information and see if we can construct the boat diagram of the compensated system. So first then, you'll see the compensated system marked in blue again, so I won't sketch over that, but let's use black to do the bode of our lead. So we remember we said at low frequencies you had minus 11 decibels, and at high frequencies we said we had plus 6 decibels. We said the corner frequencies were at 0 0.4 and 3. So there's 0.4 and there's 3. So what you'll find if 
I mark, I could um, if I could just do it as crude asymptotes and do a straight line, and you'll see using the asymptotic information, just using straight lines, I'm still not far from that green plot. I've got a pretty good idea of what's happening. So in order to get the game plot, you'll see I've got a shift down by 11 in this region. So I'm shifting down by about 11, and I've got to shift up by about 6 in this region, and then in between the two, there'll be a sort of transition. So there, that red diagram shows my compensated game plot, and you'll see how easy that was. Here, we're just shifting down by 11, and here, we're shifting up by 6, and you can do that roughly speaking up to the two corner frequencies with the transition in between and you'll not be far away from the exact plot. What about the phase plot then? Well again, we'll do the lead compensator first. So if we mark the corner frequencies, there they are, 0 0.4 and 3, and we said the peak was at roughly 1.1 and it was 50 degrees. So we mark that. We said at the corner frequencies we had about 37 degrees. So we mark those two crosses. Having marked those three crosses, you'll see that to get the actual lead um, plot is fairly straightforward. And now we remind ourselves again that to get the compensated system, we simply add. We add the blue to the black. So at this point here, one of the corner frequencies, we've got to add 37 degrees. This will take us here. At the phase peak, or the geometric mean, we've got to add 50 degrees. So I, I shouldn't have um, done a cross there, I should have done a dot. So at, at that point there, we've got to add 50 degrees. It'll take us about there. And at the last corner frequencies, add 37 degrees. So having done that, noting that we've got to go back to the asymptotes eventually, we're going to get a plot something like that. So again you'll see, albeit it's a crude sketch, you can get a pretty good idea of what compensation is going to do to your boat diagram. You'll see you've got an uplift in the phase plot and the uplift is focused in this region here between the corner frequencies. And here's the exact plots. And what you'll notice is the exact plots are not that far away from the plots we did using very crude sketches. So in conclusions, the video has presented the impact of a lead compensator on a Bode diagram for a compensated system. We've demonstrated that a lead compensator has increased the gain at high frequency compared to low frequency, and it's increased the phase in the region of the corner frequencies. So you can easily sketch the impact of a lead using just a few simple computations. You'll notice we've just used things like low frequency gain, high frequency gain, and the phase at a few key points. And so later videos will show how we can next use this in design.